Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Lord's House for Worship today. In the readings you're about to see and in the Word of God coming up, you're going to be reminded that there are just two outcomes for every person. One is eternal life and the other is eternal death. And to get to heaven, it's really, really hard. It's hard for the sinner. And so today's focus is to take these things very, very seriously and to take them to heart and to find that solution that God has for each and every one of you in Jesus. Order of service is found in your worship folder. Let's begin at this time with our opening hymn, 857. stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty and merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised and desired in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done those things that we should not have done. And we have not done those things that we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us 
forgive us and restore us according to your promises in Christ Jesus. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority alone, I forgive you all of your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, help save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith and hope and love, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. First lesson this morning is from Isaiah chapter 66. This is the very last part of the book of Isaiah. Look what God is going to do to get the message out, to take it to the farthest extents of the earth. It's an incredible thing. And yet Isaiah ends on just a, a sour note. Some are going to miss it. We read, And I, because of what they have planned and done, am about to come. And gather the people of all nations and languages, and they will come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them, and I will send some of those who survived to the nations, to Tarshish, to the Libyans and Lydians, famous as archers, to Tubal and Greece. 
and to the distant islands that have not heard of my fame or seen my glory. They will proclaim my glory among the nations, and they will bring all your people from all the nations to my holy mountain in Jerusalem as an offering to the Lord. On horses and chariots and wagons and on mules and camels, says the Lord, they will bring them as the Israelites bring their grain offerings to the temple of the Lord in ceremonially clean vessels. And I will select some of them also to be priests and Levites, says the Lord. As the new heavens and the new earth that I make will endure before me, declares the Lord, so will your name and descendants endure. From one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all mankind will come and bow down before me, says the Lord. And they will go out and look on the dead bodies of those who rebelled against me. The worms that eat them will not die. The fire that burns them will not be quenched. And they will be loathsome to all mankind. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Continue with the duet. the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your
second lesson this morning is from Hebrews chapter 12. It's really the difference between law and gospel, what's going to happen on the last day. There's a mountain of difference. Just listen so carefully to the great mountain that you've come to in Jesus Christ. What a world of difference that makes. We read, You have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire to darkness, gloom, and storm, to a trumpet blast or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them because they couldn't bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You've come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With God there is no trial. sermon is based on these words from Luke 13. Then Jesus went through the towns and villages teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? He said to them, make every effort to enter through the narrow door because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will say, we ate and drank with you and you taught in our streets. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping there and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out. People will come from east and west and north and south and will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. Indeed, there are those who are last who will be first, and first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated for hymn 698.
the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, fellow believers in him. If curiosity killed the cat, what do you think mindless speculation does for the religious person? I mean, if a creature, if an animal, for the sake of flattering its own curiosity, puts itself in life and death situations, don't you think somebody with a religion, or especially a Christian, deserves to take a matter a little bit more deeply and to consider things a little more carefully? Whether this man in the lesson that's before us from Luke realized it or not, with the question that he put before Jesus, he was putting himself in a trap. Or maybe he didn't realize it and he was already in it. All he did was ask this question. Here it is. Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? And here's Jesus' answer. Make every effort to enter through the narrow door because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Jesus didn't even answer the question. (laughs) He answered a completely different question and an even better one. And with Jesus' response, he's essentially saying, Stop it! (laughs) Stop thinking this is just some theoretical situation. Stop thinking that this is about all these other people or that you're just sitting in a classroom and this is just some academic question that's that's aloof, that's distant and detached from you and the answer is just some hypothetical situation. The guy didn't make it personal and practical, did he? There's definitely a better question here. Do you know what the better question is? Instead of, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? How about, Lord, am I going to be one of them? Lord, am I going to be there? In fact, that's exactly what the Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 2. As far as it depends on you... Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Work at this in humility. Work at your faith, at your religion. Take these things to Jesus. Jesus is saying the exact same thing just a little differently. His verb that he used is make every effort. I want you to hear how that sounds in the Greek. Agonizo. Do you hear it? Agonizo. You hear the English word agonize to enter through the narrow door. Work hard at this. Fight for this. Struggle and strive to succeed at this insofar as it depends on you. This Greek word is actually used for the Greek athletes. That's the most uh, consistent context where you find this verb, agonizo. Uh, Olympic athletes or athletes would work hard to struggle at their contest, but, but this is no game here, and Jesus isn't using it in that kind of context. On the opposite side of this door is eternal gain. On the other side of this door is not nine extra lives, is not a somewhat longer life, it, it, it's, it's not a, a little bit of a better life. We're talking about eternal life. In eternal forever. I think this man understood what was on the other side. He talked about our only a few going to be saved. He understood there's an eternal salvation. And certainly Jesus understood what's on the other side of this life. That there's a heaven there that you don't want to miss. And certainly we understand this too. God has talked about heaven and promised a heaven for those in Jesus Christ. And so people understand in general there's There's something incredible that the Lord has after this life. But what Jesus is bringing out here is, do you understand there's something right before that? There's there's this little door that every single person must go through if they're going to get to eternal life. And this little door is extremely narrow And it's very, very hard for sinners to fit through this little narrow door. Now, I I hope you understand that the context and the point Jesus is making here is, he's it. He 
is that little narrow door. And he's talking in different words about trusting him and having faith in him and those who do will be there. But again, it's very, very hard for sinners to fit through this door. Let me give you an example. Somebody sent me an email. I think this came a week ago. Pastor Miller, I'm writing about St. Paul's live streaming on Sunday mornings. Now that's the context, and I wanted you to know the context. But the point of this is not about the live stream. The person knows they can still get the video at 11 a.m. So, Pastor Miller, I'm writing about St. Paul's live streaming on Sunday mornings. No, I'm not a member of St. Paul's Howard's Grove, Wisconsin, but I'm a faithful Christian who is no longer physically able to attend church in person. And I look forward to hearing God's word, the service arrangements, etc., your church does for its congregation every week at St. Paul's. Hearing you and Pastor Bodhi preach God's word is what brings me back each and every week. The talented musicians that come to sing and play instruments to help beautify the service almost every week is very heartwarming. How can members of your church family not want to be a part of that in person? There's no question mark after that. There are two exclamation marks. That person wasn't asking a question. How can members of your church family not want to be a part of that in person? I call it being lazy. I would love to exchange positions with any one of your members who physically are capable of going to church, but don't. How hard it is to enter through the narrow door. Maybe even for people here. Now I imagine some are going to hear that in the replay in the sermon. Maybe even some of us here and maybe going to be offended. That's exactly what the sinful nature wants. I imagine when Jesus went around from town to town, city to city, and preached what he did, and we haven't gone through the entire lesson yet, I imagine some of those people in hearing what Jesus said were offended too. After all, do you know what he was talking about? People who came to church too late. And the doors were closed. The door was locked. And the owner of the house would not open that door to the people. And they knocked and they begged and they pleaded, Sir, open the door for us. We know you. We know where you come from. You were a regular. We hung out together. We had lunch and dinner together. We, we've, we've known you a long time. And not only did he not call them lazy, he upped the ante and he said, No, you're evildoers. You have persisted in sin and there is no way you are getting through that door. It is locked to you. You had your time and it's over. And then on top of that, he switched the illustration a little bit and talked about a banquet at the end, a banquet Abraham and Isaac and Jacob were going to be at. And boy, would that make it personal because they were descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they thought they deserved it based on who they were related to. Well, sometimes we do that too because because of who we know in the church and who we're related to. And so they thought they deserved it. And Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob got into heaven, got into this banquet by faith. But these people forsook it. They wore a costume instead. And so the owner says, no, nope, you're getting thrown out. Where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do you think some people are going to hear that and their sinful nature is going to, going to get stirred up just a little bit? Well, that's exactly what the sinful nature does. The sinful nature does not want to talk about sin. It does not want to repent. It sees no problem with itself. The sinful nature does not want to be called out. The sinful nature wants to get away with it. The sinful nature doesn't want to humble itself and go through the open door realizing it needs a savior. The sinful nature wants to grab your heart and life and run the opposite way from this open, narrow door of Jesus Christ. And so to hear things about confessing your sin, this is, this is kind of the narrowness of the door. You don't get in with the big head of sin. 
You don't get in when you're persisting in sin. And so for the sinful nature to hear this and, and for the Christian to confess their sin, for the Christian to confess their sins daily, for the Christian to come together and worship regularly and to confess sins with one another, this is agonizing. This kills the sinful nature and it screams. But that's exactly where the gospel is presented best to you. That's exactly where you see the incredible open door of Jesus and that it's not dependent on you, but that it's fully about Jesus. And that through faith in him, it is open. Now make no mistake, just because you're here in church today doesn't make you any better or me any better than any other sinner out there. It doesn't make us better sinners in the sight of God. That's not what going to church is about. That's nothing about looking better than other people. Nor does coming to church today make you a better Christian or your Christianity better in and of itself or easier to practice than anybody else. That, when you and I got up this morning, our sinful nature <laughs> woke up with us and made it just as hard in us as it did other people. But do you know what church does? It helps. Because here is presented Jesus. Here is the open door that's not dependent on you, but completely dependent on Jesus. Here, when sinners repent, they see what Christ has done. I mean, the work of Jesus Christ, it's not lazy, it's not weak, and it certainly has no aspect of evil whatsoever in it. When Jesus is presented to you, do you see what he's done? He agonized himself to open this door to you. In Jesus Christ, in his life on earth, he made every effort. Every effort needed in the sight of God, by obeying the law of God perfectly and fulfilling every promise God said the Savior would do. Jesus did it completely. And so it's this Jesus who went to the cross for sinners, who went to the cross for sin, not for his own, but for you. And he didn't do it for a single person in here. I, I didn't make the point, but when Jesus says, make every effort, the verb, or the the subject is plural. He wasn't just responding to this man. He was talking to the entire crowd. And so when Jesus goes to the cross making every effort, he didn't do it just for one or two. He did it for the entire crowd. In him is everything needed for eternal life. And it's open. It's open for each and every one of you. And while he talks about coming through the door, it's just a picture of trusting his complete work on your behalf. That nothing is dependent on you. That's a narrow part because we'd like it to be. And so for people who have tried other doors and run into brick walls, for people who have pursued the ways of the world and struck out swinging, for people who have said, this is so narrow, this is tough, and we haven't made the effort, and we've kind of we've coasted and, and maybe drifted, here's forgiveness for all of your sin. That's what it means to have an open door. When we talk about Jesus being an open door and coming to him in faith, it not only means trusting what he did when he came to earth, but it's receiving that very life and what he gives to you this very day. What do I mean by that? When Jesus says make every effort, he's not putting some burden on you. He's not saying here's what you have to do to get to heaven. And you kind of go away with a heavy heart and a heavy soul. Man, I got to do all this myself. That's not what he's saying at all. He's saying, treasure me. And when you come to the house of the Lord, look what he does in baptism for sinners. You have all of his effort 
for you. Look what he does in the Lord's Supper by forgiving sins, taking them fully away, wiping the slate clean, restoring you to the Lord, and opening heaven again to you. Look at what he does for you in the word. He counsels you. He guides you. He directs you. He again uses the law to warn us of sin, but he forgives us and promises to in the gospel. Sins are gone. You have the complete strength of the one who came to earth and did all of this work for you. And he still fights and contends and struggles for you through the means of grace to strengthen your faith. To fill you up. To go with you into this world. To stand firm in the Lord. This is not a struggle you do alone. You have his strength that goes with you. That's what it means to make every effort. To put Jesus where he rightly should be in our heart and life. So that he goes with us every step of the way. With such strength with such a Savior, with such mercy and grace fighting for us and and for us by, by God's work, with such a brother who's faithful to us and loves us, what motivation we have to ask the better question. Lord? Lord, am I going to be there? Oh, and now Jesus gets to give you the better answer. Well, you've come to me. You've come to the open door. And through faith in me, you've come through it. Absolutely you're going to be there. Now make every effort to stay there. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of God which surpasses our understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join in the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Heavenly Father, pour out your grace and every blessing on the newly established home of Zach and Faith Johnson, married yesterday. Dwell there with them and fill their home with joy and faith, hope, and love. Let all who enter marvel at your goodness to them. We praise you also for your goodness to our teacher, Greg Johnson, who has reached the halfway point in his cancer treatments and has had some recent upbeat reports. Lord, help him all the way through this. Give him strength in both body and soul as he fights forward. Last week, we had a prayer from Mike Ostring, and we thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering us. You protected our brother through double bypass surgery and even brought him back to his home this past week. Please continue to bless every step of his health. We also join our shut-in member, Marion Horde, in celebration of 95 years of life on earth. Lord, you measure these things out, and you measure every breath we have, and, and it's a gift from you. Thank you for Marion for her beautiful faith in you and for remaining by her side all these years. Please give her another blessed year. Lastly, help our children grow as our school year begins this Wednesday. Fill their heads with knowledge and their hearts with faith and love for you. Bless all returning students at the various schools and mature them for service to you and to neighbor. And we also join to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated for the hymn.
Morning, everyone. And welcome to guests and visitors. Love having you come. Please come worship with us again. A few announcements for you. Today, Bible study is going to be in the sanctuary and uh, starts around 915, 920. We have round two on our discussion of gender dysphoria. Interesting subject and, and uh, a lot of good questions last time. Looking forward to this today again. Uh, groundbreaking uh, for the new edition. The ceremonial groundbreaking takes place a week from today. That's going to be at 9.15, right out the south end of our facility. And i uh, love to have all of you come if you're able. There will be no Bible study next week. So uh, if you can come, come on out and enjoy that. Then the third thing, uh, the day school starts this week, Wednesday. And there's an opening service here in the sanctuary at 8.10, I believe that is. So uh, you're welcome to come and join that too. We'd love to have you for that. Lastly, there's a bonfire event tomorrow night, and I believe that's listed in the worship folder in the bulletin at 7 p.m. tomorrow evening after the Monday night service. Uh, Jim, did you have an announcement? I, I saw you standing there. Well, it's not as big as a groundbreaking, but next Sunday is Sweet Corn Fest for Manitowoc Lutheran High School, and I mentioned that the uh, it's really, you just pick up the corn and you give whatever donation and that goes to Manitowoc Lutheran High School for the academic voucher program. Those are um, helping incoming freshmen kind of uh, make that transition from our grade school tuition to the high school tuition a little bit easier. And so those are awarded at the academic fair. Uh, so there's a sign-up sheet in the back if anybody wishes to have, pick up some sweet corn before or after the groundbreaking, you're welcome to do so. One last ask, um, the harvest is bountiful, but the workers are few. Uh, so standing in front of you is the total picking crew for next Saturday. <laughs> if I'm really nice and ask Debbie, maybe promise her a dinner and a movie, she, I might get two. So if anybody has a uh, Saturday morning, we'll meet here at seven o'clock, let me know, I'll be hanging out in the back if you're willing to help and pick a few ears of sweet corn and bring it over for pick up next Sunday. That's it. He who has ears, let him hear. Is that what you yeah. <laughs> They don't get better than that, sorry. Um, any other announcements for today? Not seeing any, please greet one another. God's blessings to all of you. Have a great week. Good morning, I own. Good morning, Carl. I put a number of sermons in your mailbox. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't remember. Oh, great, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Mary. Good morning. morning. Hi, guys. Thank you. Hi, Dylan. Good Eric, thank you. This guy's on red. Thank you.